Awesome. Okay, so um, what did we have going on this week? What was good? Who's got things going on? I have a new buyer I got from an open house that we're looking at houses. Awesome. Okay, let me back you up for a second. How did that go? And how did you grab them and their information? Um, so I got asked to um, by the Jay Schmidt team to help do an open house for with one of their other agents because it was a house they thought needed two people. And so I jumped on it. Um, okay. And they're a family that came through and they didn't have an agent. And um, well, I didn't know that right away. But, um, you know, I was walking them through and talking to them. And then they asked me um, if I knew any lenders. And I'm like, uh, as a matter of fact, I do. Um, <laughs> and so that's how it happened. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Hi, so, Connie. How, you, how, how do you start your conversation when you meet people at an open house? Um, I really just kind of invite them in. Like I, that's my home and I'm inviting them in. So it's not like, ah, you know, like intense and like in their face. And I, I don't, I'm not breathing commission breath in their face kind of a thing. Okay. You know, just kind of walking them through, um, asking them questions. If they have kids, you know, talking to the kid, just being very easygoing, I guess, just to make a connection with them. Okay. Um, yeah, and just kind of, I, I, I'm with them for a while and I kind of try to read by them and see if they want to be walked around with or if they kind of need some space. Okay, good, good, good. And they asked you about a lender or you yeah. asked them if they were pre-qualified? No, they, they came out and asked me. So, um, you know, sometimes it, it, it has to be initiated by you, you know, for you to say it, but sometimes they just like open up and just start talking and the more they talk, the better. <laughs> Good. So was it a couple? Was it a family? Yeah, it was a family. They came with their okay. little seven-year-old boy, but they have two teenager boys. Teenager. So um, I met them the other day when we went out to see another house. Okay. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who else said something good happened this week? This is Melissa. I actually also did an open house last Saturday and met a couple that was working with an agent, but um, just had a really great rapport. And she actually emailed me on Monday morning and said, you know what? We really don't want to, and we'd rather work with you. Nice. So, and so I and put them in And this happened with because of your conversation at the open house? Yeah. So that was, I mean, the, I, again, I'm brand new. I only have one other set of buyers right now. So th that was kind of that's like finally a win for me. I was like, yay. Yay. That's awesome. Well, and yeah. being personable, you know, like Bethany said, just welcome people into that house like it's your own. Um, yep. Really just being nice to people <laughs> goes a long way in this world, unfortunately. I mean, some of us are brought up that way, but being nice to people really does help. I think you have to be careful that, um, especially with like uh, new people or whatever, people that are looking for clients, it's like not to come across as too desperate, like be easy and casual and not desperate. Yeah, yes. that's funny, that's funny, they can that's read funny that. that you say that because I, I mean, Janine, because I'm a retail person as well. So I yep. don't follow people around at all. I kind of follow up with them at the end and say, you know, how was everything, everything, any questions, blah, blah, blah. And then kind of start the rapport there. Just not saying that anything is wrong or right, but I think that's just more my style naturally. And I think it kind of unarms them to think that you're like looking for business or something. Okay. So just for me, I feel like that kind of works a little bit better. Yep. Yeah, well, and Janine always says, you know, and everybody come from contribution. What can you offer to them? Not, gosh, I got to grab this person. I don't have any buyers. This is, this is my only right. hope for a sale in the next six months and, and giving that real desperate situation. But how can you help them with, do you have a, you know, I can help you with a lender. I can help you find a house, you know, looking to help them because it always comes back tenfold. Right. Excellent. Congratulations. Yeah. And it, thanks. It's good to walk around and, you know, at, if you are walking around with them to ask them, you know, about like, like that's your learning, you're gathering their information because likely the house that they come to see isn't the house, right. they're gonna buy, you know, um, that'd be awesome, but it doesn't always work that way most of the time. <laughs> wow. What's okay. Good?
I let the dogs I out. that person. <laughs> <laughs> to I I make a customer, not a sale. I mean, yes. I'm there to actually gain a client, not sell that right. moment. Typically and I think there were a yeah. couple other people that were walking around that, you know, I found out at the end were not working with anyone. So I've obviously followed up with them. Um, haven't heard back yet, but of course I'll follow up again, you know, in a few days, not to stalk them, but maybe text them next time or, you know, text or no, actually they only gave email. So. Okay. I know. Awesome. I, that one. I should have like, I don't want to like stand by them and be like, okay, well write down your phone number too. I, it's like, I kind of give people the benefit of the doubt. So use that open health script. Um, yeah. And I'm telling you, I, I probably in the last, because we've had very few open houses, but I feel like I've been able to connect. I never have them sign in at all. Um, I get their information and how I do that, the open house script, if you guys text me and you don't have it, just text it to text me or text me your email or email me and I'll send it over to you, but you'll never okay. have anyone sign in again. Okay. And it works um, because first of all, you're not going to be able to read their handwriting. They're not going to be honest or they're going to mm -hmm. give you one or the other. Um, so um Ask them if they are interested in find. First of all, find out if they have an agent. And if they are, never mind. Um, you know, say, "Oh, that's a great agent," even though you don't even know who that person is. Right. Um, but then you just, uh, if they don't, ask them if they're interested in knowing about properties weeks or if not months before it comes on the market. And who's going to say no to that? Right. They're going to. Yes. Awesome. What is your, what is your name, your email and your phone number and you write it down. Okay. And bingo. They've then let you, they have let you enter their lives. <laughs> I also gave my cards to those people that said, you know, well, yeah, we just started looking or like even this one couple that called me, they were working with an agent and I was like, oh, who's your agent? Agent, And they looked at each other and she was like, Steve, um, I don't remember his last name and I don't remember who he works for. So I just was like, I just handed them my card and, you know, they contacted me. So that was good. That's good. That's awesome. Good, good, yeah. good. <clears throat> Yeah, because chances Anybody are that they, they don't really have a buyer agency with that. They're like they do not supposedly no, asked, working. They do not. Yeah, they talked to him. Yeah, but obviously did not make a connection. So now you can right get them. <laughs> yep. Wonderful. Anybody else wins for the week? If no one else has anything, I had my dog event on Sunday and it was awesome. Oh, yeah, that's a nice. Win. It was huge. The weather was awesome. I had a ton of people. I got two sheets of um, contacts. Um, awesome. Yeah. And I, I did have people sign in because I was giving raffle tickets. So therefore they needed to give me their information because I, you know, there was prizes. <laughs> that's so Cool. It was so much fun. Like I am doing, that's my thing. I'm doing, I'm an event person. I'm doing more. We're going to do an adoption event and I'm doing some fitness hey, Bethany, events. Back up for um, people who do not know your event. Can you share with us, please? So I live in the third ward and we have a dog and um, that's how we meet most people is walking around. And I mean, obviously with COVID, there was a dog explosion happening everywhere because yeah. everyone adopted dogs and people loved their dogs like children. And um, so I decided to use him as the catalyst <laughs> to, you know, do something to, because I, there's so many of our dog friends, you know, even though I go around and hand out little treats with my card on it and stuff like that, people forget, they don't associate me as a realtor. And all of a sudden we're, you know, talking to our dog friends. They're like, yeah, we're going to be moving. And, you know, we just bought a house. I'm like, dang, I'm right here. You know, hello, I am your friend. Um, so I decided to put together an event where it would celebrate our dogs, come to my building where we have a party room. And I had um, a few vendors there, um, a, like a pet food store, and they, they had products and 
blah 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 and had a a game where the dog the person drops and they the dogs win a treat i had art art that work there for a painter that put in um people could win painting of their dog um different things and uh and i posted flyers all around the third ward i did social media word of mouth i just went around and told everybody that we ran into and we probably had about 50 people come and like wow. i don't it was like awesome awesome yeah that's forced that's interaction a great idea. forced human interaction <laughs> Well, and people are looking for things to do, especially in, I'm going to kind of corner you guys, especially in Milwaukee in the third ward where things aren't open. Um, you have to have a reservation to do things. You can only have so many people. People are really looking for things to do. And um, honestly, there are a lot of people who like their dogs better than their kids, especially oh, on certain days. Sure. Sam. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's, that's great, Bethany. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, people were like, I still run into them. They're like, thank you so much for doing that. That was so much fun. I mean, people were so happy. It was like a party on our corner. It was awesome. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Um, anybody else have a good open house? Anybody have a plus this week? Accepted offer. Okay. Awesome. Garen picked up a buyer yesterday. Yesterday. Thursday, Wednesday, and where'd you pick up your buyer? At Discount Tire, awesome. So <laughs> how did that go? Okay, so he was at Discount Tire, which is his other job. And um, somebody who was in there said, you know, what are you doing? And he said, I'm a realtor. He said, good, I'm looking for a house. So oh. perfect, you know, and sometimes it's hard to have that roll off your tongue and bring that in. And as Janine was saying last week, when you're talking to people, ask them what they do. And in turn, they will always ask you what you do. So once again, make it about them and it will come back to you. Um, and getting those scripts going and getting things, um, you know, on the docket, if you will, really, really helps. So starting that conversation. Um, so. I would like to take just a little bit of a poll here. Um, how I would like everybody to put um, in the chat if you did an open house last weekend. <clears throat> what did you want us to do in the chat? Um, put in the chat if you did a house last weekend. Okay. And whether it was on Saturday or Sunday, and how many people were at the open house? Okay. Okay. The two people who wanted to get in, I just got in. So, yeah, I got kicked out. Oh, hey, welcome back. <laughs> I'm like, where did I go? <laughs> okay, so I asked everybody to put in the chat who did an open house, whether it was Saturday or Sunday, and how many people were there. Let's see. Let's see where we're at here. Let's see who's who's working. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Melissa, 20 people. Wow. Yeah, it was great. Tosa. Tosa. And Tosa. Yep. And Sunday in Delavan. And no yeah, one showed up. Uh, it was the second. I had done an open house there Easter weekend. And there were, you know, I mean, it, the, a lot of people come up from Illinois because it's on the lake. It's, well, it's, their house isn't on the lake, but it's a huge, it's 850000 So, I mean, we, you know, it's priced too high. But this, so we had a fairly interesting turnout on Easter weekend. And then the um, sellers wanted another one this past <laughs> Sunday. And I was there literally by myself for two hours. With no Wi-Fi, I was like, do do do. Oh yeah. boy! So, how did you prep for that open house, Melissa? Or how did I? Work? That was thing. So I just said, "Can I do it?" Okay. This weekend, and then didn't really, didn't necessarily want to do the second weekend, but obviously, I'm open to anything at right. right. Okay. So I so did, and, in, you know. Yep. So keep in mind when you're doing open houses, you still have work to do. So yeah, showing up doesn't mean that anybody else will. 
Right. So even if it's somebody else's open house, and now that it's getting nicer out, well, except for, you know, 40 degrees outside, um, go ahead and door knock that neighborhood on Thursday. Oh. So the Thursday before the weekend, Thursday afternoon should be your door knock day. You will be so surprised how many people you meet, um, how many leads you get, how many people ask you if you're running for office. Right. <laughs> right. But, you know, get out there and meet people and do things, because if you just show up, it doesn't mean that anybody's going to going to be there. So, um, yeah. And was, you know what? Do you know what's funny is the weekend before there were a lot of people in the neighborhood that were because it was beautiful Easter weekend. That was the day that was really hot and sunny. And so we got several people that like live in the neighborhood or want want to just see what the house was. So we did get a lot of neighbors that weekend, but that is an excellent, excellent point. Yep. So go ahead and make yourself a little flyer and just go door to door, yeah. handing them out saying, I'm having an open house. Would you like to pick your own neighbor? Would you like your friend to be your neighbor? Great idea. And keep it really simple. Some people open the door, some don't. Do not put flyers in mailboxes. It's illegal. Right. I mean, somebody told me once that the post office calls you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or yeah. Maybe they called me a couple of times. I don't know. Just saying. So it is illegal to um, put anything, you know, on a federal box. Yeah. Even though people own it, it's they frown upon that. Um, yeah. If you have rubber bands, you can rubber band it to the door. Um, a lot of times what I'll do is just crack the screen door open a little bit and stick it in. But go ahead and, and hand things out. If you have a dog, Bethany, walk around with that dog. It's actually a really good excuse for me to take my dogs for a walk. Um Two summers ago, no, not last year, but two summers ago, I had a listing in West Dallas. I can't even tell you how many steps I got by walking my dogs around that neighborhood. And I had really busy open houses because of it. And I met a lot of people in the neighborhood, which was really nice. Um, another thing to keep in mind is everybody should be posting in Facebook Marketplace before your open house. On Thursday, Friday, Saturday, one to two days before that open house, every single city slash town has a Facebook Marketplace page. Buy, sell Waukesha, buy, sell Waukesha County, buy, sell Delavan. Put that open house in there. There is a Waukesha County open house page. Put it in there and tons of people look at that. So you need to be, you know, bringing your own people to these open houses. Don't, don't rely on the listing agent to do all of this. This is your job as that agent to be doing all of this. Um, another thing is put that sign out, that rider on, um, the Thursday before, and then when you're when you're done with the open house, take down that sign, <laughs> and then just bring it back to that listing agent. Or <laughs> Nick had it up for a week and a half, and everybody was wondering where the open house was. But <laughs> oh boy, I'm taking on you. Honey, sorry. I have a question for you about open house signs. Yep. There was um, the this second weekend that I went to Delavan. There was a permanent sign. It just said somebody's name, Shore West, kind of like in the ground at the end of the, of the road, like off the busy road. Yep. And that was like the prime spot to put my open house sign. So I was really confused. Like, is this, can I not put my sign next to this guy? Should I go on the other side I of the street? I put it right in front of it. I put it right in front of it. I was wondering about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can, and keep in mind that certain cities, and I do not know all of them, but I know for a fact, Menominee Falls, you cannot put signs up even for your open house because they take them and throw them away. I have a really, really expensive sign that I lost one day. One of those metal, it was, it was an hour and a half open house and it was gone. And I couldn't find it anywhere or the police, the cop that took it, whatever. But I guess they just pluck, up, pluck them off all. Um, what you can do is talk to the person on the corner, especially if they're outside working on their yard. Ask them if it's okay if you put a sign in their yard for an hour and a half during your open house. Usually they're totally fine with that. If you think it's kind of questionable, go knock on their door. Sometimes, actually a lot of times with doing real estate, you got to kind of pull your shoulders back and just go for it. If they say no, they say no. But <clears throat> take and work those open houses. So I'm going to be brutally honest here. Like terrible. Uh, let me see here. In this chat. So we have 19 people on this call. Um, let's see here, two, 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 one, two, three, four, five. Okay, we have six out of 19 people here doing open houses. 
So how many times have Janine and I said the way to start your business, even if you don't know anybody, is do open houses? So six out of 19. I'm not that good with numbers. Um, we're at 40%, 30% of people are doing their jobs here. So of the 30% of people doing their jobs, how many people have a deal going on or an accepted offer? Because the other 14 of you don't deserve an offer or a deal. Sorry. And, and I got to be honest, it's hard sometimes because inventory has been tight to do an open house. Um, we, but now I think we're seeing more inventory coming in. If you do not have an open house to attend, if no one is, um, you know, giving you an open house to take over, then that is not an excuse not to go to open houses. That's your opportunity to get in the car. And, and we've talked about this a lot, get in the car and pop into all the open houses <clears throat> in your, in your area that you want to work and see how you are approached. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to say that you're an agent per se. Um, if they ask you, yes, I wouldn't like give it up, but see how, how you like to be treated when you walk in the door, you're gonna learn what to do and what not to do. So there's always something that you can do. Um, if you, you're out of business, you guys, if you don't have a prospect, if you don't have any prospects, you don't have a business. Correct. So every single day should be, how am I going to be in business today? I am unemployed. So Janine, do you know, I'm going to maybe put you on the spot here. Sorry, but do you guys, do you know how many houses you guys have that do not have accepted offers right now? Um, we have yes. two. Okay. So of those two, were there open houses last weekend? Yes, and we had very few open houses. I'll tell you why. Um, I know a couple of people asked me to sh do shadow. And um, what happens is I had one on Thursday and by Friday I had an accepted offer and my clients wanted to cancel their open houses. So, okay. I mean, I can just from our team alone yep. up until um, maybe this week, we, we had everyone on our team begging for open houses and there wasn't any to be given. Yeah. So um, now that's changed, right, Gail? We have, we have more um, and I think that's, that's gonna happen a little bit more in the future, but inventory is tight. Yes, and inventory is actually kicking up out here, but I had a listing that I did an open house last week, Saturday and Sunday. I would have given one away and I actually don't mind depending on the sellers doing back to back open houses. So I'll do an 11 to 1230 and somebody else can do a 1230 to two. Right. You know, we can, we can back to back those, get yourself in those houses and get things going. Keep in mind for those of you who are quote unquote full time, are you putting 40 hours a week out? So I have one thing that I've done when I maybe don't have open houses. I will look at, I'll go to properties and do a Facebook live video of it just to just promote it. <laughs> um, I went to a really cool condo right on the Milwaukee river in the third ward. Um, the other a few days ago and did a Facebook live um, and got some reaction from it. It wasn't my listing. I didn't really have a buyer, but I did it anyways. That's great. And that works and I, and you're being proactive. So for those of you that, that really don't have a huge client base or you do, and you're kind of stuck, um, you're not, you're not getting the business. Nothing's happening. Um, that's when I literally start my alphabet exercise and we're going to go kind of go through it together. Um, and this is a great exercise to kind of keep your mind fluid of potential clients that maybe you are not thinking about. So you start with the letter A, and it's not people's last names, actually. It's, it's uh, who in your database, business-wise, is an A. And an accountant, mm -hmm. uh, your acupuncturist, if you have one. Um, what else was 
an A. A C. Anybody? I can't, I can't An remember attorney? the skin the skin person assess ass, esthetician. How do you say that? That that word. Esthetician. <laughs> that could be, be an a a a a <laughs> Yeah. An attorney. You have an attorney. Yep. A to Z contacts. So what everybody should do, and I just did this on a um, Excel spreadsheet. Do an A to Z contact and write down all of your letters. Whoops, where's my camera? There we go. All of your letters and go through your contacts. And if you don't have something by a letter, this is giving you an excuse. And what this was originally made to do, like Janine said, is your, your businesses. So getting your business contacts. Um, I have a real good friend of mine who's an attorney. And I've gotten three listings from him because of... Um, wills. I have one now from a divorce. You know, you really want to play nice with an attorney because they get things coming through. They haven't been real big deals. And honestly, they've really been a pain in the arse. But you know what? I'm in good standings with him. He calls. I have one going on right now, which uh, this is interesting. I actually have a signed listing contract, but I cannot do anything with it yet because it's still in court. So I can't take it to MLS. I, it's a weird situation. It, I have it on paper, but I have to wait until it's released from court in order to do a true listing with it. So, you know, they have different things going on and they need somebody. I mean, he called me at five o'clock and said, can you get me a listing contract over by 530? I need to have this signed today. Sure. It was a last minute thing. It's, it's only a $120,000 condo, but... I've had a $350,000 house. I've had, you know, a couple other things, but he knows that he can call me and I can get a contract to him real quick. Um, so going down, the, going down the list, Jenny, do you have an attorney that you work with? Oh yeah, um, he's a, t a, a client. I mean, he. I have two attorneys that I work with, one that buys investment properties, one that is um, sends me a lot of divorced uh, doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to get them because he's representing one side. Um, but I got to tell you, even if you're not, you're not per se having a relationship with an attorney, <clears throat> I have found that um, the divorce community is a pretty tight community. And once your name gets out that you represented a couple that's selling because of divorce, you will get referrals from either that husband or wife with other people that are going through a divorce. So that kind of just spirals, maybe not all, you know, right away, but your name does get out. Um, mm -hmm. So attorneys are a great, just a great source. Um, and your accountant, you know, honestly, if you're giving your accountant business, they should be giving you business. You are a professional. So even if you call on a monthly basis, hey, I'm just checking in with you. Um, do you know any of your clients that are looking to sell or buy a house right now? And if they say no, great. Um, do you mind I'm gonna, if I call you next month? They will be expecting your phone call. I call my um, insurance agent and it's a joke. She knows. I know, Janine. Actually, I have somebody for you. Because now they're expecting that phone call. They're they're going to be very mindful of, of remembering, oh my gosh, they're thinking about selling. I'm going to refer them. I refer a ton of people to her. So yes. I feel like, hey, listen, I'm giving you business. I expect the same back. We're professionals. Yes. Um, my, my beautician, unfortunately, um, his wife is a Nicole Warish. <laughs> married to, to a real estate agent. So darn it, that's gone. But um, uh, my chiropractor, I mean, literally sit down. It sounds ridiculous. It sounds like we're back in kindergarten. I it might, but it works because some, some green lights may come up for you. Like, oh my gosh, I should be reaching out to my dog groomer. Or when I pick Hazel mm -hmm. up, I should say, hey, do any of you guys, are, are any of you guys looking to buy a house or sell a house? You know, let's do some business together. Just always 
keep working. And when I get stuck, I literally go back to my list and see who have I not been in contact with that I should be. And I, there's always four or five that jump out. Like I, I've dropped the ball. <clears throat> and it's hard. You when you get busy, you drop the ball often. Yeah. I mean, you get, you get so involved in what you're doing and where you're going. And I have to make sure I'm here for this and for that. And this person needs this and that person needs that. And then you'll think back and, you know, a couple of things that you were just talking about. Um, my insurance agent, I really need to sit down because we've had a couple of things that have changed and sit down with her and say, Hey, you know, do I have this right? Can we tweak this? And by the way, who do you know who needs to, who needs, you know, my help because I've sent you people. Right. So, so um, attorneys are real good. Um, beauticians, if you want to know anything about town, you guys know I used to do hair, right? If you want to know anything, and I mean anything in town, you talk to your barber or your beautician. Now, we can't tell names because there are things that you really don't want to know about who and what is going on. But every time somebody comes in and sits down in your chair when you're doing hair, if you're doing their color, it's an hour and a half to two hours. You have their undivided attention. They're going to tell you that they're remodeling their home. They're going to sell it next year, that their kids are going to college, that they want to downsize. And do you have an electrician? Do you have a plumber? So keep this in mind with your contacts. These aren't only people that you're going to contact, but that you can refer out. So call them and say, hey, I'm putting together a list of professionals. Do you mind if I give your name out? You did great work for me. I have an electrician who did absolutely phenomenal work in our rentals, put in new um, electrical boxes, and he was super, super reasonable. And he was good and really a nice kid. He actually helped me with a couple other things that he didn't have to help me with. Um, we had some can lights that we put in in the ceiling, and he had this really cool circle cutter thing just to zip in to put those can lights in. Do you know how long it takes me? with a drywall knife to cut fricking holes in for those stupid can lights. I know a lot of people don't understand what they are, but it takes me forever. And then I always screw it up and then I got to butt it and tape it and fill it. He took that thing and he zipped him right in. He put in 12 can lights for me quicker than I could have done one. But I also have referred him out many times now. So, you know, E, an electrician. D, your dentist, um, your dog groomer. You know, dog groomers, especially with everybody getting dogs now, they're really, yeah. really busy. Talk to that dog groomer because they know what's going on. Um, what else? F? What do we have for an F? Anybody F? Firemen. Firemen. Uh, yeah. Firemen are tight. I yeah. mean, tight, tight. So if you sell a house to a fireman, you will have the whole house as your um, buyers and sellers. Because they have that brotherhood and they, I mean, they trust each other with, with each other's lives and they will also trust each other with their real estate needs. So firefighters are awesome. Um, G, what do we have for a G? Grocer. Your grocer? Anybody else for a G? Gardener? Yeah. A gardener? What else do we have for a G? <sighs> Groomers. Groomer, dog groomer, DG, groomers. Okay. okay, H, what do we have for an H? Hair. Yep, hair. You can do hair. Your housekeeper? Housekeeper. So, your house, pardon? Yeah, housekeeper is great. You know, your housekeeper, because she goes to how many houses a week? Um, and she's going to know if somebody's thinking about selling, if they're decluttering. I mean, you usually talk to your housekeeper. Mine comes when I'm not there because it's better off that way. <laughs> um, I, I is kind of a hard one. What do we yeah. have for I? Insurance Investment agent. Broker. Oh yeah, your insurance agent. Investment broker. Ooh, I there see. we go, your investment broker. Um, J. What do we have for J? God. Diana, what's the business man? that starts with a J? Yep. Jeweler. Your jeweler? Your jeweler, your junkman, somebody said. Your 
your junk guy that comes in hallways. Yeah, yeah, your jeweler, because if they're buying a ring, what are they going to buy next? Uh, right. A house. Or a bank Well, or both. A lot of them. Yeah, a lot of them do it backwards and do the house and then the ring, but that's okay. Uh, jeweler K. What do we have for a K? <laughs> kindergarten teacher. Your kindergarten teacher. Perfect. <laughs> Your kitchen Perfect. remodeler. You yep. know, remodelers are really good because people will usually remodel their house and then, you know, they may keep it for a year or two and then sell it. So, kitchen remodeler, kindergarten teacher. L? Landscaper. Your landscaper. <laughs> Your librarian. If anybody goes to the library anymore, are they open anymore? I don't know. Are they? Okay. Anything else for an L? Your living room furniture purveyor. We're deep. We're digging deep here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Reach in. Uh, L L L. Yep. Yep. Lawyer. Lawyer. Your attorney. Lawyer. Attorney, lawyer, perfect. L L L. Yep. Landscaper. Lifeguard. Lifeguard. A lifeguard. Landscaper people. We kind of did that with garden. Yep. Your landscaper. Um, I've had a ton of business from my landscaper. He always calls me in January and said, "How busy are you?" And I'll say, "I'm swamped." He goes, "Great." That's a great indication of how my spring, summer, fall is going to look. Because if you're really? super busy, then I know I'm going to be, because they're going to be calling me to put in patios, blah, blah, blah. And he he gives me a lot of business, including his own. So okay. if you have a landscaper, get to know them better. Because yeah. they are, they're on it, you guys. Hey, they I have a property all. coming up for a landscaper. In Sussex. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Makers, town of Lisbon. Um, it's like a 1974 raised ranch for 349 and it has a 30 by 50 pole shed. So if you know of any landscapers or, you know, small business people, and in town of Lisbon, you can do whatever you want. Two acres. So I'm, the, I'm calling, I was there last night, um, and I'm calling my landscaper today to see if, He's looking to buy a place because I know where he lives. He doesn't have a place to store his stuff. So, okay. Uh, M. Pardon? Oh, a locksmith. Locksmith. Yeah. Locksmith. M. Makeup artist. Makeup artist. Makeup artist. Mailman. Makeup artist. Didn't catch him. Oh, mailman. Yeah. Your mailman. Your masseuse. Masseuse. Keep in mind, these are people who have appointments on hourly basis, and they talk to a lot of people. So use them. Use them and abuse them. Your marketing professionals, people who do marketing, they talk to people all the time. Yep. What else do we have? Um, your manicurist. Manicurist. Your manicurist, my nail That's guy a, talks to me all the time about different stuff. I'm going to get a deal out of him yet. Yeah. Actually, I gave him a um, countertop person. So going back to C, you know, where you get your counters, where can I get good cheap granite? I told him who we use when we do our, our flips and our rentals. Um, N, who do we have for an N? Nurses. Yeah. Nurses. Yes, a thousand percent on nurses. They are another group that is really, really tight. Right. Nanny. Nanny. Your nanny. Yeah. Keep in mind when nurses are at the hospital, they talk and eat all the time. They stand around and talk and they know everybody's business. <laughs> they do. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Oh, what do we have for an O? Optometrist, ophthalmologist, yep, yep. optician, occupational therapist. <laughs> yeah, occupational, occupational therapist. therapist. 
your obstetrician, if you're in that um, realm. <laughs> yeah, though. Yeah. <laughs> OBGYN. A lot of people are real close with their OBGYNs. They talk to them about everything. They're going to know who's selling their house. Right. P. Physician. Your physician, your pool Personal guy. Personal trainer. Personal trainer. Your plumber. Police. Planner, police. Your police. That's another really, really tight group. Right, Katie? Yep. yep. Katie's Thank husband is, is a cop and they are tight. Tight. They're in that brotherhood again. They trust each other with their lives and they'll trust you with their house. So yeah. police are really good. Q, the queen well, of the neighborhood. Who knows yeah. everything about your neighborhood? Yes. That queen of the neighborhood. <laughs> Anything else with a Q? Q is a hard one. Uh, hmm. Quail hunting buddies. I love it, Grady. Your, your quail hunting buddy, perfect. <laughs> That's you a good one. <laughs> You're what? The quarantined neighbors. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully okay. they're getting out of quarantine. Um, hunting buddies. Our, what? I like that. Our, our, uh, speaking of quarantine, respiratory therapist. Your respiratory um, therapist. Um, your restaurateurs. Yes. Going back to B, everybody who's in the bar business. Yes. R. Anything else for R? S. Your sommelier. Everybody's drinking during COVID. Where are you getting your wine? <laughs> your schools? Until you get kicked out, Nick? <laughs> well, let's talk about that. If you and I don't even know anymore if they still give out a school directory with everyone's email address. I mean, yep. add those people to your database and put them on a drip campaign. Put all of those people in your database. I mean, it's a numbers game. Well, and keep in mind when you're putting people in your data database, put them in. They have the option to opt out. Yeah, they can always opt out. It's not that they're stuck in there forever. Oh, yeah. Going back to A, your alumni ne networks. People uh, you I haven't love seen. That. Yeah, I love that. Okay. Yeah. Well, and a lot of that, so Katie did that with her high school and college alumni, and she didn't get any leads today, but now they know what she's doing because, you know, what you went to college for is not what you're going to work in normally. I mean, only what? What is it? 10% of the people work in the field that they went to college for? How many attorneys do you know that are not in the attorney business and teachers who aren't teaching? I mean, it's one of those things. So going back to your alumni and saying, hey, I'm in real estate now. This works great with my family, with my life. I love doing it. Let me know if you need some help. They will come back to you and then put them on your drip campaign. You've just added your six college roommates, your six people, and I'm just doing small numbers here, but your six people you hung out in high school with. And I know with Facebook, a lot of people don't like Facebook, but I'm in contact with all the people who I didn't like in high school. <laughs> I mean, honestly, and everybody kind of touches base and you're not in the same place as you were when you were 17, thank God. And I get a lot of comments back with things, especially when I make comments to them, you know, let's touch base, let's have a beer. We're not setting up to go on vacation together or live next door to each other, but it's making that contact with people so people will come back at you. And one of my first sales was somebody who I went to high school with, niece, because I put on there, I had this great condo, which was cheaper than rent. She messaged me right away and said, my niece is looking for a new apartment, but she would love this. She can buy that. And she ended up doing it. And it was somebody who I wasn't even close with in high school. So keep those contacts in there. I love the alumni thing. Going back to C. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Jump in. While you're reaching out to people like this, one of the other things you might want to say is, I just started in real estate. You know, you, exactly what, what Connie just said. And then a tagline as you leave it is, and if you want to learn how to do what I do, get in touch. Right? Let's start building your downline right away. And I'm going to leave you to it. Awesome. You guys are right. That's actually a great idea because... You know, there's quite a few people who have lost their job 
during COVID and they're making changes. And there are certain times in your life when everybody, not everybody, but many people change jobs, change careers, you know, and if you have people in that area, in that arena, they can, they can join us. It's, it's a good thing. Um, let's see here. T, we're on T. What do we have for T? Therapist. Yes. Your tax specialist, your therapist. Which you'll need your one in real estate if you're here long enough. Totally. <laughs> Teachers. Yeah. You'll need a therapist, therapist if you're in real estate long enough, I said. Um, how about your telephone provider? You know, when you go into US Cellular, when you talk to those people? Yes. Tell them what you're doing. Um, let's talk about that a little bit too. You guys, as you're thinking of this and going down the alphabet, it's not just buyers and sellers. Are these anyone, any, if there's a person that is just a superstar, is this someone that you could possibly recruit and talk about real estate as a career? Don't forget about that. Build your downline as we're going through the alphabet. I want to go back to real quick church directory. Yeah. Church directory is a really good one. Um, S, going back to S, the Sherwin-Williams guy. Yes, that's a I've, great. I've gotten to be really good friends with the Sherwin-Williams guy, and I keep running into him. It's crazy. I was at, um, with the election, I was at an election party, and he came right up to me. He's like, Connie? And, of course, I was dressed up more than I usually. Okay, when I go in to get paint, it's because I haven't showered for the day. I have my painting clothes on and a baseball hat and no makeup. And he actually recognized me, cleaned up. I was kind of impressed, but a great guy. And then I ran into him. We were out with some friends. So I'm now friends with the Sherwin-Williams guy. And he knows that I do real estate because I have given him my card. So, you know, get in with that painting guy because when people paint their house, they're usually thinking about staying, buying, or selling. Um, so back to T. How about you? Use an interesting one. How about your Uber driver? If you have a regular Uber driver, what else do we have for you for a business? Um, undertaker. Uh, okay, the undertaker. When people hey. die, what do they do? Right. You gotta sell a house. <laughs> right. The big joke in Florida is when you hear an ambulance, there's another house for sale. Right. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> The neighbor was standing outside with the neighbor, and all of a sudden I heard an ambulance. And I live in a, our house down there, it's in a real quiet neighborhood. It's like, oh, an ambulance is, yep, now the house going for sale in the neighborhood. <laughs> oh my God, that's so bad. But yeah. <laughs> uh, v. What do we have for V? The violin teacher. I was just yeah. going to say that. <laughs> oh, yeah. The vet. The vet. Your vet. The vet. It's hard with a vet right now because of the whole drop-off thing, which I'm yeah. still not a fan of. The vet, what else do we have for a V? Oh, your vehicle, your fix-it guy, your, your mechanic, your vehicle your mechanic. Planner. Your vacation planner. Your vacation <laughs> planner. Yeah. <clears throat> Visiting nurse. W Pardon? Visiting nurse. Visiting nurse. A visiting nurse. You have a visiting nurse. Somebody who has a visiting nurse. W. Your wallpaper person. Your wallpaper Window remover. Yeah. Wallpaper Window is coming washer. back in style. Your window cleaner. The window cleaner. The window installer. Yeah. Remodeler who does windows. Remodelers are really good because yeah. they always know what's going on. A lot of times people will fix up their house before they sell it. Keep that remodeler in touch. Actually, they haven't talked to my friend Mark for a while. Ding, ding, ding. See, all these things, once you start going through it, and Mark has done some remodeling for me. I've referred him out a ton. I've gotten some listings from him. Um, when I talk to him, it's an always an hour long, but great guy to keep in touch with. And actually, I saw on Facebook that his daughter's having a baby. So I definitely have an excuse to call him now. See how when you start thinking about these things, your mind starts going. So even having ideas to get things flowing is what really, really helps, I guess. And that's where Janina and I are trying to, you know, get you going on finding people and finding lists and contacts with things. So when you say, I don't know anybody, 
Well, you do. You do. You do. You know. X. Your X ray tap. <laughs> Your yeah. X ray tap. Why? Why not call all your friends? <laughs> okay, I'm getting Z. squirrely here. <laughs> Why is the interesting one in Z? Z. Anybody who works at the zoo? Right. Anybody who has a lot of kids in their house and runs a zoo? Nick. <laughs> um, I have that. Nick today. I say, everyone. <laughs> Right, get out your paper and pen and literally brainstorm about your A to Z and write it out. And I'm gonna give you one other tip for the generation and then I've actually gotta go to a listing appointment. So I've gotta zip out this one, you guys, it works. And I'm in a map uh, coaching program called Never Ending Referrals. And this was brought up on one of the um, couple weeks ago, a great lead generation idea. Go into your MLS and pull sold homes in your area that you are wanting to work in. So neighborhood or zip code or town or whatever it is. And sold from... 2016 or 2015 through 2018, all the solds. And then look into the tax records, make sure it's, you know, and make sure these are not active, that they're not back on the market now. These people are prime for putting their house back on, on the market because their house most likely has appreciated greatly within that time frame. So pull all of those out in the area that you want to, to work in and have a letter written um, that I know you've actually lived in your home for X amount of years. Are you curious about what today's market would bring for your home? I would love to send you an updated market analysis for your property. Please reach out to me and put your name, your email and your phone number. That's it. You send mm -hmm. them out. So start out with a good chunk. Start out with, I'm going to do 50 homes this week. I guarantee you, you are going to get somebody that's going to reach out to you and say, yes, we're thinking about selling our house. Or I'm just curious how much my home is worth. That is starting a conversation. And even if it doesn't happen right away, you're then going to put them in your database and keep touching them. It works. I reached out to someone random and um, he's like, yeah, actually we're thinking about selling and this is what we're looking for. That could be potentially in this case, a $2 million deal. It, it, they didn't know me. I didn't know them. You know, I just went into MLS and looked at what has sold five years ago and started targeting certain streets and neighborhoods and it works yeah that's and you could that's that, a great idea yeah you could do that for two days solid block it out on your calendar and from nine until one this is my project and i'm going to do it from nine to one every single day this week and that's my lead generation bam if you did that every single day you guys monday through friday your business will explode yep Janine, can you just really quickly, I know you have to go, can you just repeat just real quick those three sentences that you said, like in the letter? I, I was writing them down, but I didn't get everything you said. Yeah. Um, and this is you said curious about so, Yeah. If you're curious about what today's market looks like for, for you, and if you are interested in knowing your home's worth or your home's, you know, value. Yeah, your, uh, value, I would love to talk to you. Please give me a okay. call and here's my email address. Great. Thank you. Keep it, keep it really simple and don't overthink it. Mm -hmm. Sign it and then run copies. And again, I would also um, put a disclaimer on there just to cover yourself. 
Um, if your home is currently on the market, this is not a solicitation. Yep. Um, I've actually done that once where it was not on the market when I sent it out, but like the day it went on the market, they got my letter and um, the agent called me. I'm like, hey, listen, it wasn't on the market when I sent it out. So then I just started adding that. But a really good exercise, do it every day. Go through your alphabet, go through the MLS. You've got nothing to lose, everything to gain. Yeah, I like, I like that a lot because in 15 to 18, so 2015 to 2018, they've owned their house for six years to three to, three to six years. So in that three to six years, how have values gone up in houses? I mean, of course, every area is a little different, but you know, what can you put, it was actually at our, um, um, money guy yesterday, whatever the heck his name is. <laughs> My name is Planner, that's what he is. Um, and to get 10% off of your money is actually pretty good. So all of these people who have, you know, made 10%, 20% on their house, that's a really good investment plus what they paid down. You know, maybe they want to move to a, a bigger house. Maybe they want to be moving to a smaller house. Keep in mind if they bought their house when their kids were five, their kids are now 11. Maybe the kids don't want to share a room anymore. They need to go to a, you know, a bigger, bigger house. Maybe their kids were 15 when they bought the house. They're now off to college. So they want to downsize. So that um, 2015 to 2018 is a great, um, great year window to look at. So what you're going to do is go on MLS and do a quick search. Type in the county you want to be in. And the cities you want to concentrate on? I have no idea what that is. Okay, somebody's tapping in here on us. Oh, I don't know what that is. Anyways, um, so go into quick search, put in the county, put in the cities that you wanna work in, and then click on sold. So usually it comes up automatic as active, click on sold, and then put in the years 2015 through 2018, and it'll give you the list of all the houses. Then what you can do is go up to the top right and click print. When the print comes up, click on list, not detail. So if you click on list, it'll give you a list of all those properties, and then you can have that and keep that as you know a hard copy. So you know what you're working on because you really want to track and keep touching these same people and working through that. Um, any questions on that? Nope. Okay. Lindsay must be on here somehow, at least on that TV. I have no idea. So um, last week we covered time blocking and scheduling. So in the message area, I want everybody to be honest. We have 17 people on here. How many people filled out a time block schedule? Zero. <laughs> okay, week two. Everybody, please, please fill out a time block schedule. Um, I know Janine emailed it to some people. I have a paper copy here. I like a paper copy. But what you can do is, this is your time block schedule. It has Monday or, yeah, this one is Monday through Sunday on the top. And then it has the hours on the side. So starting at six o'clock in the morning until eight o'clock at night. Time block in when you work out, when you take your kids to school, when you have date night. Start with your personal things that you do every single week. Because otherwise, as we talked about, real estate can take over everything. Put in when you work out, if you get up in the morning and meditate, whatever you guys do, mark off church on Sunday. And then I want everybody to mark off an open house, either Saturday or Sunday. Maybe two, maybe three. It's everybody's goal this week to find a open house. We only had four last week. Find an open house this week. Then I would like everybody to put in on Tuesday morning at 9 until 11 o'clock. 
office meeting and office meetup. Thursday morning from 9 to 10.30, PC. Oh my gosh, everybody has a schedule now started. <laughs> so once you put these things down, it just gives you, you know, a start to things. So being as we have Tuesday and Thursday mornings booked, let's book, and let's not get carried away because some people get bored. Let's book from 9 until 11 on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, A to Z. This is your new thing. Contact your A to Z, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 9 to 11, A to Z. Then I would like everybody to put in a lunch date. A lunch date with preferably one of your A to Z's. If you can get two or three, that's great. Oh, and keep in mind, lenders like to take you out for food and drinks. I went last week, it was great. My husband texted me, he's like, where are you? I said, well, I'm out with a lender. He says, it's been two hours. I said, well, I'm on my third glass of wine. <laughs> I had to catch up a little bit. But what's really nice is because, you know, I went out with that lender when I had an open house this weekend. I had new buyers come through and they do not have a lender. They were not pre-qualified. So because I just was out with um, Aubra, I called her right away and I said, hey, I have these new buyers. So it's getting back and reconnecting with people. What she'll make on this loan is definitely worth the wine and the hors d'oeuvres that we had. Then you have time for showings. Um, take some time during the week and block off follow up. Everyone should have a list of people that they need to follow up with, whether it's going back in your notebook and recontacting those people that you may have lost. They wanted to list their house this year and you forgot about them. They wanted to buy a house this year and you forgot about them. So everybody should have a pretty good start to your calendar. What else are people putting on their calendar? Put in when you have to pick up your kids. Oh my gosh. Don't forget to pick up your kids from school. It happens. The best part of your day, what, dropping them off or picking them up? <laughs> oh, forgetting to pick them up. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> what else um, can you put on your calendar? Anybody? Okay, so we have our personal things. You know, things you need to do something for yourself. Everybody should have something on their calendar for themselves. Whether it's, like I said, working out, meditating, church, do something for yourself. You need, you need to fill your soul as well as your personal life and your work life. It's really, really important to keep that balance. So do me a favor. If you don't have anything on your calendar, find something. Uh, taking a walk. Um, I know Karen Spinty is really, really good with her time to herself and taking her walks out of the North Shore office. She's super, super good at that. Um, doing something that is money making. So time to make money. That would be contacting your A to Z's. Put in there if you're into um, expireds, you know, calling expireds, looking up expireds. Do me a favor, put in there one hour a day Looking on um, Facebook Marketplace, block that off because we can all get real scatterbrained and look at things. Check out your Facebook Marketplace pages. Sign up for them in the areas you want to work in. Lake Country for sale by owner. Waukesha County for sale by owner. Waukesha County for sale, no baby junk. I mean, there's, there are so many of them. Get on those pages because people will put on there if they're selling their house. You may have a buyer, you can contact them and go in with a single party. Even if they say no realtors, if you have a buyer, call them and say, I have a buyer. You know, would you honor a buyer agency, you know, a buyer commission? Most of the time they'll say yes, or they might say no for a week. Call them back in a week, write it down in your notes, call them back in a week and say, I see you still have not sold. You know, would you honor the buyer commission for my buyer? 
They're really interested. So making those connections is, is really important. Another thing that's really nice is when you're on these sites, when you have buyers or sellers and they're looking for things, hey, I just saw a refrigerator. I know you're looking for one in your garage. What does that do to you? You took that extra minute to call them and say, there's a refrigerator on Facebook Marketplace for your garage. I know you're looking for a soda fridge. It just, it really makes you touch them again. I know you're looking for a landscaper. Somebody was advertising grass cutting. So this really helps you make your connections and make your contacts. Okay. Connie? Yep. Would you be able to go over um, kind of language that you use when approaching um, like a for sale by owner when you have a buyer that's interested or... I also have a buyer who like knows someone who's going to sell their house. They want their house, but um, know that the seller is pretty frugal. And I've spent yep. like the last three weekends writing offers for these people. So I'm not interested in getting cut out of the deal, though I understand yes. like that might happen and I have to kind of be okay with it. Um, it's a fine line. Because I obviously like primarily want them to get a house. Obviously, I want to get paid too. Um, so especially when they have a relate an existing relationship with the seller and trying to exactly. So keep in mind that there's a lot of liability with buying a house. Um, buyers can come back on things with houses, especially if the right paperwork is not filled out. One that's really really important is your real estate condition report. Um, if this is not filled out. And if your inspection is not done, the buyer is stuck with whatever is wrong with that house. A new basement wall, if you have to excavate it, can be $50,000. So what I do is I say, you know, um, when buying a house, I can definitely do, you know, your side of the deal. Um, this way you don't have to hire an attorney because your attorney is gonna cost a couple thousand dollars anyways. Um, I do this every day. We make sure that your title is clear because if there is something on that title of that house also, that goes with the house if that title is not clear. So if somebody did not get paid for their $30,000 roof and they put a lien on that house, that goes to the buyer and the buyer is then responsible for that house if that title is not cleared prior to. So what we do is we make sure that all your paperwork is straight. Um, we make sure that all, all the paperwork is filed correctly. We get title involved to make sure that the title is clear and we make sure that your transaction is smooth from start to finish. We also make sure you hit your dates and deadlines. So, um, you know, you're not stuck on the street and you don't lose your earnest money for this house. Does it help a little bit? Yes, but as far as like talking to the seller. Yes. They're going to so, say, I don't want to pay commission. Like what... Do you say just pay the buy, you know, the 2.4 or how do you? So when you're doing both sides, keep in mind, you're doing double the work. Right. Um, I usually start a little higher. Yeah. I mean, I've done single parties at five and I've done them at four. Um, I, I usually get them up to four because you're doing both sides of it and you're keeping all the paperwork straight. I proposed four. I'm yep waiting to hear back yep and you know what they can do is work it in as you know a cost of doing business and add it on to the price that's what i was thinking like so they agree on a purchase price and then add four percent to that purchase price yes so that they're they're financing yep well and then everything is taken care of and it's legal because we have all the legally binding um you know contracts okay yeah, they can, a lot of times what they'll do is add it right on, especially, and you know, maybe they'll even split it with the buyer because if your buyer is losing out on houses and you know, this is something that they want, maybe the buyer will pay 2% and the seller pays 2%. And that buyer can put that 2% right in their loan. So if you take 2% and I always keep my calculator, um, Mortgage calculator. 
So how much is the house, Beth, um, Betsy? Uh, 500. 500,000 times 3%. Um, so 500. is $10,000. So $10,000 um, at 3% is $42 a month to make sure everything is taken care of and it's all legal. So that's $10 a week. And a lot of times what I do is I break it down. And especially when I'm working with buyers, um, you know, break things down because when they look at big numbers and prices, they, um, $10,000 looks like a lot of money compared to $10 a week. So I break it down by, by payment a lot of times. And I just keep it on my phone. If you punch in on a Google search um, mortgage calculator, a real easy one pops up and just put down the amount and the percentage by 30 years and it'll figure out your numbers for you. Good question. Thank you. Especially with people who are losing out on houses, they might have to pay that 2%. And then the seller can can pay the two percent. All set. Okay. Questions about um, what we've covered today? I hope everybody has something to do today. I know when I first started, I was like, okay, what do I do today? I don't have anything to do. So these should give you guys something to do. Do that A to Z. Get that time block schedule down and follow it. If you're not all the way through Z and you're already through your two hours and you haven't you know, contacted everybody, stop at that two hours, move on to the next thing. Make yourself a little note and say, I got through D or Z or whatever it was, and then go back to it the next day. It's okay if you don't get everything done in one day. Um, so time block schedule, your A to Z, and then go through MLS and grab those solds from 2015 to 2018 and start with your letters, sending them out, handwriting the envelopes, throw a stamp on it. You'd be surprised how many people call you. When I do a big um, flyer, I, I get at least one phone call. So if it costs you $100 in stamps, $200 in stamps, and you get a $5,000 commission from it, it's worth it. So sometimes you gotta do a little bit of work to make money. Any questions on what we covered? Everybody's going to look for an open house this weekend. Figure something out. Awesome. Next week, we have Jenny Klug from um, Focus Title. She's going through Title 101. What is title? Because it's really important to know what title is, um, what they do for their searches, how they help your sellers, and how it helps your buyer. So Jenny Klug will be on next week to go through everything. Um, and that's about all I have for today. Uh, Bethany says she time blocks in her old fashioned planner. I actually like to have one of these time block schedules just as a reference because, you know, I get lost sometimes like, okay, what should I be doing until it clicks in on who you should be contacting. So that's all I have for today. Anything else you guys? Cool beans. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.